Hello, and welcome to the Pain Points Podcast. I'm your host, Christian. Very excited to have our guest with us today. This is John LaFleur with the Centurion Wood Coatings Company. John, thanks for joining us on the Pain Points Podcast. Hey, man, thanks for having me. I'm uh, interested to kind of get into some of these, uh, you know, questions you might have about our company, CIC Coatings. Uh, Centurion's one of our brands here, and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, get into the industry on these uh, single component, two component wood coatings for sure. Nice, nice. So um, you're you're already throwing us off schedule. Uh, so you work for CIC, which doesn't stand for Centurion. Centurion is one of your one of your brands underneath that. So yeah. what does CIC? What other companies does or coatings does CIC represent? So CIC stands for Custom Industrial Coatings. Um, the, uh, the principals of the company, Miles and Tom, uh, they, they started that back in, I believe, 07. So mm -hmm. the, uh, the different brands that they have, it's gonna be uh, Hugh Miller, uh, exterior wood stain. So that's a fence and a deck stain product. That's actually the shirt I have on here. Um, okay. Centurion Wood Coatings is our industrial wood coatings division that handles uh, solvent-based lacquers, uh, nitrocellulose, pre-cat lacquers, uh, vinyl sealers, um stains that sort of thing for interior mm -hmm. wood and then also our water-based side which people know us most often for talking about single component acrylics two component polyurethanes um and a few other unique products that we have um, yeah well the last brand that cic makes is our uh, light industrial metal coatings called next bond next bond um, so, okay yeah so that's going to be a uh, solvent based shop coat primers universal primers uh alkan enamel top coats uh, then we have our water-based side that has a uh, very similar lineup to that. Nice, nice. So specifically for CIC, what do you do so that we can tell the people um, what your position is, what area you cover, um, and region, really? Yeah, for sure. So I started with the company uh, back in 2019. Uh, I was brought into the company for the exterior stain side, uh, for fences and decks, the, uh, the humular side of things, mm -hmm. to help grow that brand. Uh, since then, the Centurion line has grown exponentially. Uh, that's really where a majority of my time lies in. Uh, however, like I said, uh, Centurion and humular that's where most of my expertise is. Uh, but I'm a sales rep here. Um, that's, that's primarily uh, what I do. I mean, sometimes I'm in the lab spraying products or uh, pre-priming samples like today. That's what I was doing for one of our uh, trainings, our distributor, uh, pre-priming some doors. So whenever nice. we get to the distributor, we have the, uh, uh, the class there. We can sand those doors and shoot whatever top coat they want, either, you know, the single component or the two component top coat. Awesome. Um, awesome. So, yeah. so you've been with them for about four years now, you were saying? Yeah. And um, how how did you stumble upon the stain um, side of it? Because you said you started off with Hugh Miller. Was that something, I mean, do you have a background in coatings? Did you stumble in it? Um, tell us a little bit about John. Yeah, sure. So uh, I believe it was around 2017, I got into exterior stain uh, through a family member. Mm -hmm. um, they own a, uh, a fence, uh, fence standing company down here in Dallas. In Dallas, the Metroplex here, fence standing is a really, really big thing. Okay. Uh, Oil-based semi-transparent stains. So I got into the industry that way and uh, kind of um, over time gained a relationship with uh, Tom, uh, the president of the company here at CIC. Mm -hmm. And just over time, as I, uh, as I kind of moved around in the industry, um, you know, I continued to grow that relationship with him. Uh, and then he, uh, he called me over, asked me if I would come and, and work for them back around 2019. Oh, nice. uh, at that time I was living up in Arkansas. Uh, that's where I'm originally from. Okay. So I moved uh, from there down to, down to Dallas where we all are here. Awesome. Awesome. So you're based out of Dallas then? Yeah. So, uh, and then what region do you team? serve? So for right now we're, uh, we kind of help cover each other. So just for example, um, next week I'm in, I'm in Washington. Uh, the next you know, week after that I might be in North Carolina or in Pennsylvania. So we don't really have a, uh, a defined territory. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes we just cover for one another whenever one might be sick or might be out or we have pro shows uh, right now. 
a lot of our distribution is in the paint store model. So oh, nice. In the springtime, they have the pro shows. Um, so, you know, last week I was in New Orleans, and another salesman was, uh, uh, I believe he was in California. So we might cover for one another, but uh, primarily I'm, I'm on the East Coast or in the central United States. Oh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, definitely racking up them airline miles then, huh? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Where was your no, that's good. That's good. Um, so, uh, really, today the reason why I wanted you on the show um, was to talk about Centurion. A couple, I think it's been about two months back. I've reached out to you, uh, reached out to your company, trying to figure out, like, because I, I see it on Instagram. Um, we've been uh, my company. We've been chasing a, a certain product, a certain style of finish. I've been using. Um, uh, a certain, uh, like a urethi urethanized enamel, but I've been having a lot of issues with dry times lately. It's just not drying fast enough. And if I could only get something to dry a little bit faster, I could cut a day out of each job and either have more time and freedom to work on my business or just the flexibility to have off or stack my schedule with something else. So there's a big advantage to what i heard centurion wood coatings has to offer with at the time from what i heard about their 2k products now after having spoken to you and we'll get into this you guys offer also offer some 1k finishes and i'll tell you what i started messing around with the, one of the 1k finishes and it dries fast and hard um so uh, let's start talking about, um, I guess, before we go into specific, like, um, you know, the, the different ones like the 1108 and the 1107, before we get into that, when we're coating a piece of wood, specifically in this case, we're probably talking to mostly cabinet painters, what characteristics are we looking for, for, for from a performance standpoint out of our wood coatings in general? So if I'm talking about the primers, I'm looking for uh, great adhesion um, with the two component products, especially like the 1107, that's our water-based two component polyurethane primer. Uh, that's gonna have excellent adhesion uh, to existing substrates, whether that be a CV, an existing UV coating, pre-cat mm -hmm. lacquer, or a water-based finish that's on there. It's gonna have great adhesion to that. We're always gonna recommend to clean and then sand before you put any of our products on that. But yeah. adhesion one, um, the other thing the 1107 has is great stain blocking or tannin blocking capabilities. So uh, stain blocking, that might be where you have a uh, uh, you know, stain and lacquered cabinet. You burn through on the edge and that stain is going to come through. Right. Uh, that's where that primer is going to help you out there so you don't have an uneven finish. You know, if you're going to paint uh, stain and lacquered cabinets white, you don't want that edge to be, uh, you know, come through a red stain or a yellow stain. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what we kind of look for in our primers. Uh, fast dry times, we want them to sand very well. Our chemist, Miles, uh, he's very, very good at designing products that sand well, that dry fast. Because we know if, you're, if you own a business, you're looking to uh, give the customer the best product possible, but you're also looking yep. to make money to get in and, in and out of the job site. You don't have weeks to wait for a product to dry. Absolutely. Uh, work your out. Yeah. If we're talking about the top coats, you're looking for great scratch and mar resistance, chemical resistance, uh, moisture resistance. The two component polyurethane coatings are excellent against moisture. Um, if you've seen uh, lacquer jobs right under the kitchen sink where the, where the corners meet, where they scuff those edges of the corners, and then you see that lacquer cracking and peeling or peeling up, popping off of the wood, that's because of one, they, they get brittle over time, but two, the moisture is going to eat at that. Right. With two component pro products. Uh, I mean, I've seen some guys use our products, the two component primer and top coat, and actually coat it one and one um, over a substrate and leave it underwater for 24 hours. And ex I think it's called an edge soak test. Uh, wow. Another guy there, Eric Reason, that's done that with a few of our products. Uh, phenomenal results. And, and they pass that test. Yeah, definitely. Wow. The two component coating, uh, definitely, I, I believe there's no change or effect. With the single component products, uh, you know, it's not going to be that great. 
but it's going to be better than pre-cat lacquer or conversion varnish, definitely. The water-based wow. coatings can cut such a large, uh, a large distance is what we found from what they used to be. I'll tell you what, if a client calls me and they say that their cabinets are underwater, I think their coating finish is the last thing that we're going to be concerned about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but what, for sure. what 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 a testament to how well your um your coatings are performing so you kind of um i appreciate you talking about the different um properties that we're looking for in performance um you threw out a couple of different terminology out there uh what is the difference between um a, a 1k and a 2k um does the k mean anything just kind of go over that real quick yeah, so a single component product is what you'll usually get at the paint store. Um, that's going to be right out of the can. So, for example, our uh, 1108 uh, White Universal Primer or our 400 Series, that's a single component product. That means you're not adding any hardener or activator to it. The, uh, the 2800 Series or the 1107, those are our two component uh, top coat with the 2800 Series. The 1107, our two component primer. Um, in order for it to be at its best, that's where you're at, you know, adding that hardener into it. Um, you should see some of the, the samples we've done. We have some little PPS cups that go with our conventional units. And hey. adding a hardener into there and letting it sit you know, overnight a day or two and it comes out as a, as a hard puck. That's, wow. That's just the, the chemical reaction of those things are insane. And have that on your cabinets, um, the durability is awesome. Yeah, no, it sounds like it, especially, you know, typically with, uh, you know, the, the big box paint stores that we're looking at, um, buying their trim enamels or their cabinet grade, yeah, even their urethanes, um, leaving something in a test cup like that, it'll form a skin, the skin may get hard, I can rip it in half, um, you know, without it like stretching or pulling, um, but it's still probably going to be soft in the middle. Uh, so uh, that that catalyzation definitely makes a, a huge difference um, when it when it comes to that, and and that's just going to show how how well it's gonna um, perform on the door even more so. Yeah, definitely. So so one K means is stands for the one component lineup. Two K stands for the two component lineup. Um, but. I have friends who are, uh, you know, fellow tradesmen who are cabinet makers, right? Um, they, when I've talked to them about, you know, are they using 1K, 2K, typically cabinet shops are using uh, conversion varnish. So sure. how does, uh, I know, is, is, is conversion varnish, is that one of the products you guys offer? So we don't offer conversion varnish. Okay. Um, yeah, but... Uh, to kind of get into the conversion varnish. Uh, yeah, just what's the difference? How does a, a conversion varnish differ from uh, the the 2K polys? And why, um, why would yours be more of an advantage in our situation where we're typically doing a re recoat on cabinetry? So to go into that, uh, one with water-based, obviously, I mean, water-based polyurethanes, it's gonna be the smell factor number one, the VOCs, okay. have much less on that. Uh, two is the conversion varnish is not going to have the flexibility of a polyurethane. Um, also, the moisture resistance in a conversion varnish is not what a water-based polyurethane can achieve. Uh, that, if there is any uh, edge or scratch deep enough to go down to the substrate and moisture mm -hmm. gets down there, it's going to pop the conversion varnish straight off. Oh, wow. Also, the um, the impact force, if you were to take a hammer and uh, hit it into a conversion varnish door, it's going to shatter. If you do that into a polyurethane door, uh, you might get one crack or something right at the impact, but it's going to bend with the wood. Uh, conversion varnish will not do that. So so the 1K and the 2K products, the, the polys, they are uh, hard and durable, but not brittle. Am I getting that right? So whereas a conversion varnish, it's still gonna be hard and durable, but it's more of a brittle product. And then also what we were talking about uh, earlier with the characteristics that we're looking out of a top coat is that all the resistance factors, right? Especially in this case, in the kitchen, the water resistance, it's gonna have better water resistance than a um, conversion varnish. And uh, 
Chemical resistance is another factor. It just depends on the grade of CV you're talking about. If you're mm -hmm. talking about mid, uh, mid to high grade CVs, um, the chemical resistance of our coating, like the 2800 series, uh, is, I mean, it's amazing uh, competing with a conversion varnish. Uh, I won't name any names of the conversion varnishes out there, but uh, just, just for example, our 2800 series, uh, whenever you're talking about acetone, um, whenever it's, it's cured enough, we're talking about a week, uh, you can withstand 100 rubs of acetone on our finish uh, before any, any degradation to the finish happens. Um, That's a very specific test parameter. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. I know it's, it's not for everything, but even, uh, you know, alcohol, denatured alcohol, you can test other solvents. But we do know that uh, whenever people are, you know, uh, using a kitchen, that chemical resistance is a factor. Uh, yeah. Acetone is kind of overkill. But it's also a good test to see where your chemical resistance ranks. Oh, for sure. Because if it breaks, if it's able to withstand that, then it's able to withstand less hot solvents um, with no with no problem, right? Kind of a torture okay. test. No, that's that's really cool. That's really cool. So, um, so we know the benefits of using. Um, a one K two K one of your polyurethane products. Now I hear a word or a term thrown out a lot, vinyl sealer. Can you explain to me what vinyl sealer is and when to use it? So our vinyl sealer is a uh, vinyl modified nitrocellulose product. So uh, think of a lacquer, um, not like a pre-cat lacquer, but just a, uh, some people know of a, of a lacquer undercoater. That's kind of what the vinyl is. It's vinyl modified. So what we use our vinyl primer for is to block stains and tannins. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another great 1K stain blocker out there, a uh, solvent-based stain blocker that you might see in stores in uh, gallons, five-gallon pails, or even the little rattle cans. They have success because whenever you have those bleed-throughs, you can spot prime those spots and then sand it maybe in about 40 minutes, 30 minutes. Right. Uh, we found people have success right around 20, 25 minutes sanding that product. That's fast. Once they lightly skip sand, they can move on down the road. Wow. Wow. So when when would be a, or when is a good – because you recommended or you said that the, system, the coding system for the 1K is your CW1108 universal primer um, and couple that with the 400 series acrylic top coat, right? And then on the 2K, we're, now we're talking about the uh, CW1107 um, acrylic primer, and then we're coupling that with the 2800 series uh, polyurethane top coat. And both of those, we would uh, use the uh, 4002, the CW4002 hardener, because it's that yes, two-component product. Yes, correct. You're going to use the exact same hardener with the uh, with the two component 1107 primer. That's a polyurethane as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're going to use one hardener. One of the things whenever Miles uh, developed our program, developed our coatings, he wanted it to be as simple as possible for people. Um, we don't want to have eight different hardeners, and you have to use this hardener for this product and this hardener for that. Then right. you look around your shop and you have six or seven empty bottles, or not empty bottles, but you know half half empty bottles sitting around. Yeah, um, and it's a waste of product. Um, yeah, so that, and, and it's a waste of money. You're you're holding onto inventory that you know you're not necessarily using. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So it's more efficient wow. that way. But as far as as far as the vinyl sealer, in which um, in which coating system are we gonna would we use? Would, would a vinyl sealer be recommended? So you can use the vinyl sealer underneath the 400 series or the 2800 series. Okay. It just depends if you're doing a refinish in someone's home. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend, uh, you know, going full bore with the 1106, the, the vinyl primer, because of the fumes, because of the smell, okay. uh, the off gas. If it's something where you're using a rattle can and the customer is okay with it, that's fine to do some spot priming if any tannins or stains bleed through on the single component primer. Um, in a shop, uh, you can use that also as your primer. Right. Uh, like I said, it dries to sand in the summer like 20 minutes and you can sand it 25 That's minutes wild. right now, um, which it's it's excellent uh, to get a few coats on, you know, get a couple coats on a door. Uh, 
and then you know get into your you know your top coats right uh, right but we also so, we carry a black in that and also a clear in the vinyl primer okay okay so those comes in come in different bases um so you you mentioned seasonality you know you said in summertime we're talking 20 minutes with this vinyl sealer um i live in florida in central florida um and we have two seasons down here we have summer and not summer so it's either 90 degrees all day every day with 110 percent humidity or it's 60 degrees in the morning and then 90 degrees in the afternoon so we don't really have that off season so how does seasonality affect versus someone who is uh down here like me or in dallas fort worth like you are versus somebody who is applying these coatings up in uh, the new england area minnesota um you know throughout the nation so for the vinyl primer, it's not going to really affect it that much, uh, being a solvent. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty comfortable with that as long. I mean, your humidity some days is going to affect the solvents, but if we're getting into the water-based products, the majority of our line, you really want to uh, just make sure your air movement is there. If you have stagnant air, let's say you do a you know, um, you know, 40, 50 cabinets, you have them on a rack, and you you shove them in a closet and shut the door. There's no air movement. Those doors are not going to dry whatsoever. Uh, okay. Water-based rods, they dry from evaporation. So okay. if you have, you know, indirect air movement, we're talking about a fan, say, in the door blowing out and new air is coming in. Mm -hmm. That is the best way to dry water-based coatings. Um, let's say it's, you know, 50 degrees in the shop, it's 100% humidity, and you don't have any air movement. That might take two or three hours to dry. If you have, you know, a 60 to 70 degree shop, decent air movement, and let's say it's 70 or 80% humidity, you're probably going to dry within spec right on time with the with what the coating wants. Awesome. Um, with water-based coatings, it's just that that air movement is so crucial. It's to get the water out of the coating, getting that dry air in and that moisture-rich air out of the area. For sure, because the, the, the water is just there to suspend all the other products, and then we want it gone as fast as it can so that the core components can do their thing, right? Exactly, exactly. So speaking of specs, what are, um, let's just take uh, the 2K line because I think 2K is really um, where a lot of people are going. Um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, two component, um, whether it's with uh, Centurion or with other, um, you know, some of the Italian brands out there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really seeing a lot of focus on the 2K. What can we expect as far as from start to finish. We covered, uh, we want to clean first, always clean first, then sand. Um, so now I've got my, my hopper ready. I'm ready to spray. What am I spraying? And how does that kind of sequence out? So then you're going to mix up your primer. You're going to, uh, usually I'll say I stir stick my gallon. I'm going to pour it into a separate mixing container. Let's just mm -hmm. say I'm going to pour in 64 ounces, exactly half of a gallon. Uh, so I pour in that 64 ounces, and then I'm going to get a separate cup, a quart cup, mm -hmm. and I'm going to measure out how much catalyst I need. So I'm going to take that, let's just say we're going to go by 10% just to make things easy. So I'm going to measure out 6.4 ounces in a separate okay. cup of catalyst, catalyst slash hardener. It's kind of interchangeable. Um, and then I'm going to be stir sticking my primer, my 1107, while I slowly pour in that catalyst. If you were okay. to just dumping that catalyst, that 6.4 ounces in there, you have uh, you run the risk of shocking the system. So oh, wow. Than our three hours of pot life, you might be, you know, 30 minutes of pot life. I've seen that happen in the past. It's shocking the system and diminishing your pot life greatly. Because at the end of the day, so, this is a chemical reaction. This isn't yeah. just backyard science, right? Like this is actual exactly. chemistry at work. Exactly. It's, it's chemistry at work. Uh, but once you, once you get that in, I'm saying I'm mixing the primer, you know, I'm stir sticking it while I slowly pour in that catalyst. That should take you, you know, 10 to 30 seconds, just depending on how you like to do it. It's mm -hmm. not an exact, you know, exact science of, oh, you, you have to mix it in in a certain amount of time. Uh, but doing it that way, and once it's fully mixed in, then you can start to load your pump. Um, if you're going to do it with a airless sprayer, I recommend a 308 tip. 
for our 1107 primer or okay. any of our top coats. We're talking 2800 series, 400 series. You can do it uh, with a 308 tip or a 408 tip. I like sometimes using a 408 whenever I'm doing you know larger panels or larger doors. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps you to put a little less on each pass mm -hmm. um, because with an airless, you can get kind of carried away with how much you put on if you're using like a 208 tip or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, just the difference between between the two. I mean, we're talking going from a 308 to a 4, 408. That's 33% more area coverage that you're having the same amount of fluid being applied. So just from that standpoint, thinking of 33% more coverage with it or area covered, not coverage necessarily like that. That's a big that kind of helps with um, uh, like room for error, right? Yeah, it, it definitely helps you with your you know, your, your room for error. Obviously, if you were doing boxes on the job site, let's say you taped off and you were doing the boxes, maybe you step down to a 308 or, mm -hmm. you know, you're doing spindles on the staircase, you step down to a 208. Right. But it's really just to help on those, on those big doors. It's hard to hit your 50% overlap if you're spraying out of a 208. It's yeah. much easier to do it off of a 408 or a 308. For sure. Um, but to step back into the process, I'm going to prime that uh, whatever piece I have with the 1107 at that point. And as long as you have that good air movement and you didn't over apply, uh, we like to say right around four to five wet mills is ideal. One, that's really all you need on your first coat. And two, if you're hitting nine or 10 wet mills, you're going, I mean, your dry time is really going to double. Um, okay. You even might run the, the risk of, you know, uh, drips or or sags in the coating at that point on the edges. So I'm going to prime my door, let it sit, and right around the 45 minute to an hour mark, mm -hmm. um, you will most likely be able to sand um, right around that time. Okay, awesome. No, that's a, a, a very clear process. Um, pot life, uh, did we discuss pot life? So for the two component coatings at 15%, it's going to be three hours for the 1107 primer, the 2K primer, and then the 2800 series at 2K top coat. And these these are being uh, being water-based coatings, uh, water cleanup, um, maybe a little bit of uh, soap to clean out your machine to get it really clean, uh, change out your filters. Um, what about if, like, let's say um, a piece of tape fails we wound up getting overspray on something that we didn't want to get overspray on. Um, what's the process for that, for cleanup? It really depends on what you get overspray on. If you're talking about a uh, tile floor, mm -hmm. uh, you can usually use something like acetone. If it's something like a hardwood floor and you have a, uh, say a polyurethane on there, or it's uh, other woodwork or something like that where you might degrade a finish, some people will use a razor. Uh, some will use, say a brown paper bag or something like that if they notice it later on. You want to catch it sooner than later. And if you do, you can just take a, a, a wet rag, something like that, and wipe it off. But so you said with the brown paper bag, the procedure on that is just cover it up and and then not let the client call, just wait for the client to call you back that they lifted it up. <laughs> exactly. I've never heard I've never heard the brown paper bag. Can you, can you unfold that for me? So it's kind of the, the brown paper bag trick. So it's something that's not going to scuff up the existing surface. Oh, it's going okay. to be able to denib or to take away some of that coating. But the thing is, it, it really depends on how how far out you find this out. I mean, if it's a day and you just find out you have overspray for some reason, that's the kind of the double-edged sword of making coatings like this is it's so hard to clean off of something that you don't want it to be on. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, it's exactly what you said. It's a double-edged double, double -edged sword. No, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Um next question what so we've talked about these coding systems do you know off the top of hand how much your company spends every single year on research and development man like when they're researching these products and systems i really don't i don't know the exact percentage or the exact dollar amount we I mean, we might have someone else on the, on the podcast at a later date be able to disclose that, but I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, no. Okay. Well, the reason why I'm asking is leading into this next question. I imagine it's more research 
being done than the guy who is taking an Italian product with their top coat and trying to mix it with your uh, undercoat or your or vice versa, whatever they're trying to do. Um, kind of let's kind of go into that. Like mm -hmm. you guys have systems, the importance of using it as a system. And not only in the beginning, but also the during and the aftermath of mixing mixing brands. So it can become an issue, especially if someone's primer is softer than our primer, because mm -hmm. our, our top coat is is rated to uh, to go over both of our you know our vinyl primer, our eleven oh eight that universal or our eleven oh seven. We know the hardness of those products whenever you're top coating them. If you mm -hmm. have something like a soft primer. Your, your top coat is only as durable as what's underneath of it. If you have a soft primer, it's going to, it's going to uh, scratch or, or dent with whatever's underneath of it um, if it's soft. So um, another company's primer, let's say it's a single component and it takes you know, four hours to dry, eight hours to dry before you can sand it. Usually those coatings are going to be softer. They're going to take okay. much longer to cure. And since we haven't done the test of the compatibility with those products, uh, if you run into a troubleshooting issue with that, um, the company that, that supplied you that primer, they're usually not going to know how to troubleshoot our top coat, and we won't know how to troubleshoot their primer. So you're kind of at a, a weird in-between point um, if you're using a, a hybrid system. You'll really know how, you know, know how to uh, play with both coatings to get them to work, and that's that's kind of a mad scientist kind of thing that, uh, yeah. you know, another rabbit hole to jump down. Yeah. I, I mean, that's a, that's a great term. I think that's a term that I was looking for as far as like being a mad scientist and trying to figure this stuff out on our own. The, the point that I'm trying to make, whether it's with your company or a different company now, just because they have a softer primer doesn't mean that there's necessarily anything wrong with that. But that softer primer is meant to go with their top coat and the characteristics of that top coat. In your case, you have a harder primer and it dries incredibly fast, um, but it's designed to go specifically, it, it, it's a pairing, right? Yes, it's a, it's a pairing. We know, we know exactly what that top coat, our top coats are gonna do for our primer. Uh, and plus, I mean, to troubleshoot the issue, if you say, yeah, I'm using the 1107 and X top coat has an issue I'm experiencing in my shop, um, you know, I can I can troubleshoot that. I have the 1107 primer in my facility. I can actually look up the batch number, go pull the retain or go pull a gallon and right. use a very similar setup. If you're using an airless, I can do the same thing you're doing here at the plant. Uh, if you're using someone else's primer, I'm I'm not gonna go and, and buy a gallon of their primer just to troubleshoot an issue for for one contractor uh, i don't right. know many coding companies that would but no yeah. no I, I i can't think of any either no that that makes a lot of sense all right so would you say that um the 1108 coupled with the 400 series and the 1107 coupled with the 2800 series are those your flagship cabinet coating uh wood coatings um those are your two flagships in the 1K and the 2K? That Those are the only, uh, the 400 series and the 2800 series, those are the only water-based top coats that we have. Yeah. What, uh, what we, but yeah, those systems are our flagships. I would say the reason that we do that is because we found in the industry that companies that sell a 1K, 2K, 1, 1K slash 2K, meaning this product can be catalyzed or left alone as a single component. Okay. Those products, the single component, you know, 1K, 2K top coats are generally not as durable as a true 1K when they're used mm -hmm. as a 1K, and they're not as durable as a true 2K when they're catalyzed. So it, it doesn't make any sense, um, you know, from, from how we see it to offer three different top coats whenever the, the one in the middle is kind of inferior whenever they're used in both cases. So that's why we, we found the best one component coating we can, we can make we find the best mm -hmm. two component coating we can make and just offer those as a as a system and the top coats what what miles has done is he's found you know the product viscosity how it sprays out all of those features to fit 85 percent of the marketplace because you can't please everybody but right that 85 percent of the marketplace 
is using, you know, say HVLP and airless sprayers. I know there's mm -hmm. guys that use uh, the air assisted units. They're great. Yeah. Um, but we give them the ability to tweak the coatings. If someone wants it a little thicker so they can spray vertically and get a little more vertical hang, we have a thickener product. If you want to reduce it because you like spraying coatings thin and you want it to lay out a little better on a horizontal surface, then you can have a reducer or what we call a retardant that slows down the drying process. We give you the tools in order to tweak the coating if you have a little bit of a different uh, equipment setup than someone else. Um, right. We, we appeal to that 85% right out of the can, what the product is, and then allow people to change it if they're that other 15%. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Very cool. So with those two being your flagship, especially in the water-based category, um, what pro is there a product in your, um, in your catalog that is like a, uh, like the Trojan horse, like the secret, like, like a, a hidden gem almost, I would say that, that people should, um, should have in their, in their arsenal, not necessarily to replace one of these products, but just it offers something different. Man, I'll say that the thing that I see a lot of people using, and they'll, they'll use our primer under someone else's stop code. Is that 1107 primer, that two mm -hmm. component primer? It's yeah. something that, that most can't duplicate in the industry, even in the, the higher end industry that we're in, the two component primer. Um, I'll even say the 1106 as solvent-based vinyl primer. We're not the first to make a vinyl primer. I don't want to put that information out there. There are other companies right. that have vinyl primers. Absolutely. But the way it's designed, the way it sands, it sands so nice, lays out smooth, um, you know, blocks those stains and tannins. For what it does, uh, it's phenomenal. Um, I don't want to go into every single product because we, we have, you know, the top coats are awesome also. Uh, just to say one, I mean, the 400 series, everyone could use the 400 series. It's a great single component product. You can sand that product in right around 40 minutes. Uh, yeah. Sand it and recoat it. Um, the durability is, I mean, it's the durability on that single component product is better than some lower grade CVs, some two component CVs. Wow. Uh, some of the testing I've seen recently, it's, it's just, it's crazy. It's now, good. do you guys publish uh, some of these test results in either uh, the product data sheets or on your website? Not the test results against other companies. Most uh, most of the end users, um, they'll be using, say, a CV, and whenever they get the product in their hands, they'll do some test results themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll spray both products, let them cure about a week or sometimes even three days. They'll do their own chemical testing or their own scratch and mar testing. They'll pick at the coatings. They'll see, um, you know, kind of, kind of doing what they're up against. Uh, there's some other guys, uh, you know, I'll just keep, th I'll throw this guy out again. If you've ever seen Americ Reason, uh, he's sprayed all of these water-based coatings for a long time before I've right. been in it. Um, and he, you know, some of the testing he does is uh, very, very in depth as well. I check him out. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, I think that's it for um, questions. I know that's a, it was like drinking water from a fire hose. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're very knowledgeable about your products, about your systems. I feel more comfortable uh, now um, getting this more in-depth uh, uh, detail on, on Centurion, uh, what you guys have to offer. I'd love to have you back and maybe we could even talk about um, the Hugh Miller lineup, or um, even if you have a, a counterpart who can talk about, um, it was uh, Next Bond was the other company. Yeah, Next Bond's the other company. Yeah, um, yeah. I will also include just just a little to hype something up. We are going to be coming out with a, a cabinet training series, some videos. Uh, okay. For okay. Each of the systems and the products. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. Now, is this going to be um, a paid? thing or no, is it going to be free no. oh we okay just want to share the knowledge with everybody get it to many as many people as possible uh we get a lot of calls uh every single week i mean i i probably handle 15 to 20 calls a week of people calling in asking hey where's my closest distributor or yeah hey, do you have a process do you have a video on these coatings so i can just look at it I, you know i don't want to have a 30 or 45 minute conversation you walking me through it i just want to watch a video 
on my yeah. own time whenever I'm, you know, whenever I'm at home. So we're kind of appealing to that and we don't, uh, we just kind of want to get it out as, as much as possible. Um, For sure. Yeah. No, I mean, it's smart. Essentially, you're putting a system in place to handle a pain point in your business. You know, that's what we're all about here on the Pain Points Podcast. And what better way to kind of ease some stuff up than have this video that's going to answer this duplicatable question that keeps arising, you know, fantastic. Uh, do you have any idea? So first of all, I'd like to say that that is the first pain points exclusive that has ever been launched on our podcast. So thank you for that. Um, do you know when it, have they announced when that's going to be released? Uh, I know we've been doing some filming recently, so it, it'll probably be a couple months because there's whenever you get, you know, three or four days of film, there's a lot of editing time. Oh, for sure. And then once once we get that, then we'll present it to, uh, you know, uh, the management, upper management, and then we'll we'll kind of tweak it, get it where we want. And then yep. we'll, we'll release uh, video by video. Uh, we'll also have shorter portions, maybe five or ten minute portions uh, just to deal with like, hey, this is how you mix a catalyst or, hey, this is how you um, use an air assisted pump or a, you know, the benefits of a conventional, you know, gun or an airless system. We'll, we'll go over a few of those things in smaller videos and then we'll have mm -hmm. larger videos if someone wants to sit down and go more in depth. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. That is awesome. Sure. Well, I appreciate you bringing that nugget to us. Um, is there any other burning desire that you have before we sign off today? Man, uh, next time you have me on, we'll, we'll get into some of the new cool coatings we're coming out with. I'll okay. Up. Nice. Nice. A little teaser for next time. Well, John, we're definitely going to have you back. If the So the people have heard your expertise, your company's quality, they're testing behind all of their products, and they're a little bit more familiar or should be a lot more familiar with your coding's systems, emphasis on systems. Um, if they have any more questions after this podcast, how do they get a hold of you? How do they get a hold of their product? Uh, tell us the websites, emails, phone numbers. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, if you want to call CIC Coatings directly, it's 972-384-1280. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you can also go on talk, onto our website, CICCoatings.com or CenturionWoodCoatings.com. You can shoot us an email there. That's going to come to uh, our sales director or go directly to us. Uh, we'll answer any emails you have. If you call in to our main line, uh, you can leave a message there and then I'll call you uh, or any of the other reps will call you as well. Whoever's available, we try to call you back the same day. Sometimes it's, you know, 10, 15 minutes after you call and sometimes <laughs> it's three or four hours, but we get back with people. We don't leave people hanging. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can definitely attest to that when I called and I had a couple questions. We kind of just really, you and I had a phone call that resembled this podcast, right? Um, yeah. But it, I just felt like there was so much information that you unpacked in that 30, 45 minutes. Um, we just had to share it and and to, yeah. to have somebody, you know, eavesdropping on our phone call would have been fantastic at that point. Um, but I think we were honestly, we covered everything in that really, really cool stuff. Um, really appreciate the product. I went on to the um, centurionwoodcoatings.com onto the website. I ordered myself the sample pack. If you're kind of wanting to test the waters with this product like I did, um, I tried it. I, I've only tried the 1K system because uh, I didn't want to mess around with uh, mixing anything that day. But I can tell you that it dried just as fast as you said that it would. It sands to a powder finish just like you said that it would. And um, uh, it doesn't, the top coat, it didn't burnish, it didn't scratch, it stuck tenaciously, um, truly a bomber coating. Uh, you should be uh, proud of the product that your company uh, puts out and, and proud to be able to represent that for them. So John, I really, really appreciate your time here. Thank you for being a wealth of knowledge and making yourself available uh, for future questions. And yeah, we're definitely gonna have to do this again for sure. We'll do it again. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks. All right.